Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about uh, bullying, you know, being bullied at school, being traumatised, how that relates to anxiety disorders like social anxiety, life anxiety, paranoia, negative thinking, overthinking, and basically just being a very fearful person. So I'll talk about bits of my story, things that happened to me when I was younger and how I've moved past them and gone on and built more confidence and I guess I guess healing is, is, is the appropriate word and also gone on to better myself and, in, and motivate and inspire other people. So before I get into this video, I'm not going to make any promises. I'm not going to make a promise like I can heal you because I, I can't make that, that type of promise because I think everybody's different and different things work for different people. But I do think within within the context of what I'm saying, there is a, there is a human truth, if, if that word makes sense that everybody could benefit from uh, the advice that I'm going to give in this video if you are willing to take the advice and apply it and obviously that's down to you. So anxiety, social anxiety is the main topic on this channel. If you know my story, that's what I have battled with on and off all my life. That was kind of the, the origin of all my problems, of why I got into self-improvement in the first place, you know, why I wanted to get over my anxiety of asking a, a girl out and getting a girlfriend, get over my anxiety of breaking out of my local area uh, and, and meeting new people and going to new places and definitely getting over my anxiety of speaking publicly. And I don't just mean public speaking, like, like um, organised events, which I've done, I'll come to that in a second. I mean just being able to speak aloud in a shop, in a cinema, in a restaurant. I remember I was so embarrassed at a stage when I was younger, that when I used to go into KFC or McDonald's or any shop to order my food, when it was my turn, like I would literally feel like I was um, just so much awkwardness in my body. I would, I would freeze up. I would start stuttering. So when the person would say, yes, sir, how can I help you? I'd feel, I'd feel so much anxiety and pressure because there was other people in the shop that didn't know me. They'd already ordered their food in KFC and now it's my turn. I feel like everyone's judging me. I was paranoid. I thought everyone was looking at me and they were looking at me the same way that bullies looked at me, you know, that made fun of me and bullied me at school. And I remember simple little things like that used to be so difficult for me that I would cringe. Sometimes I would wait. I'd look, at, look in the shop, see if it was empty. Then I would go in and order. But if it was busy, I wouldn't go in the shop because I'd be too anxious, too embarrassed to, to place an order in a takeaway shop, in the Chinese shop, in KFC, uh, especially when I used to go to Oxford Street when I was younger. I'd get my Christmas money from my mum and dad, aunties and family, and, and I'd have a few hundred pounds, all of my friends would, and I couldn't really go into, um, into um, JD Sports or, or, or a shoe shop because I was too, too nervous about buying trainers on my own. I found it too awkward going in, interacting with people. So th these are some of the damaging effects that bullying had on me later on in my life, how it affected me, um, you know, talking to people in, in different situations. So one of the things I, I want to touch on today is the mindset of someone who's been through what I've been through, who maybe hasn't healed, hasn't improved themselves um, like, I, like I have and like I continue to and many people that I've helped and inspired. So... The mindset is what, what happens is most of the cause of these anxiety problems and the social anxiety. Now, let, let's just do away with hereditary in the sense that there is a popular belief, and, and I do believe it, that sometimes if, if members of our family had anxiety problems, our mom, our dad, or, or our, our, our parents, parents, or before that, if it runs in the family, if, there's, if mental illness runs in the family with anxiety disorders or social anxiety, it can get passed down. I really do believe that. I really do believe that some of that was my case. But I honestly believe that predominantly most of social anxiety, most anxiety-related problems, disorders that us men have, most of it comes from bullying at school. Like if you didn't get bullied at school, if you didn't get physically hit, or in my case, a lot of the guys robbed, you know, money stolen or, or your toys or your video games, or if you didn't get, you know, the name calling, heckled, laughed at, made fun of how you looked. If you didn't go through these things, 
you wouldn't have this severe anxiety around people. You just wouldn't because the anxiety is a learnt behaviour. Well, we, obviously, we don't, we don't like that fact. You don't, put, you don't put your hand up in class and say, yeah, I want to have anxiety. I want to learn how to be anxious around people and feel scared all the time and paranoid and awkward and, and ashamed of who I am. No one wants that. No one in their right mind wants that. But you pick it up because what happens is, what happened to me, there were certain traumatic events in my childhood, most of which were at school. They weren't in, in the household. They were at school where I was threatened or, you know, there was a time where the teacher said to me, you know, could you come to the front of the class and can you read this chapter out of a book? And obviously it triggered me. I got nervous because I knew I knew I was going to start stuttering. I had a problem with stuttering or, or stammering and getting awkward and not being able to get my words out because of getting anxious and so overwhelmed in situations where there were other people around. Obviously, it was a big class when you were younger. I don't know how many kids, 10, 15, maybe more. So coming up and doing public speaking for a shy, anxious person is, is a nightmare when you're younger. And, and I did start stuttering and people did laugh and then I went back to my chair and I felt awful about myself. So that was one of the situations, one of the scenarios that I went through. There were other ones like, you know, when I was younger, I remember wearing no-name trainers. And today that wouldn't mean anything. But when I was young at my school, kids were nasty. If you didn't wear designer trainers like Reebok or Nike, you got destroyed. You know, they, they take the mick out of you. They make fun of you. And obviously when you're like, when you're 9, 10, 11, you're so sensitive that that, that just crushes you. Now, I went to a mixed school, boys and girls. So, you know, my parents couldn't always afford the latest trainers. I, I did get those things eventually, but there were times where we did, parents couldn't afford it. So I had to wear, you know, like basic trainers that might have been no name. And it's funny because I remember high tech was, was a cheaper brand. Everyone made fun of that. And I had high tech trainers on and I got destroyed, you know, by kids in the playground. And it made me feel ashamed. It made me feel embarrassed just because I had, you know, I didn't have the most fashionable trainers on and that affected me. So that might have lasted five minutes of name calling and laughing, but the, the, the lasting effects were affected me for the next 10 years of my life. And all of these incidents that happened at school, whether it was verbal bullying and I got physically bullied as well, I got punched, punched really hard, kicked, uh, sometimes uh, spat on. I know it's horrible, but these are things that I went through and all the other kids in, in my class, your head pushed or things thrown at you in a class, something like a hard object thrown at the back of your head and, and, and you're like, oh, my head, who done it? And then you turn around and you don't, you, you have an idea who done it, but you might not know who done it. There's a gang and bullied by gangs. It wasn't just like in my school. It wasn't just like one kid coming up to you and bullying you. I mean, that happened. It was like a gang. It was like five, four. So sometimes I was outnumbered, I was terrified. There's not, nothing I could really do. And in a lot of cases, you know, the way I was brought up, I didn't really tell the teachers because that, that would have been kind of, that would, that would have been considered grassing and that was something I never, no one wanted to be labeled that. Um, now I wouldn't see it like that. I think any kids getting bullied should, should tell the teachers. He's, he's, that doesn't make you uh, that label. Um, it, it's not right bullying. But anyway, at the time, that was my mindset. I just kind of kept it to myself. Eventually, I would, uh, I would tell my dad. I wouldn't tell the school teachers, maybe till much later when it escalated. But sometimes they didn't do anything, the teachers. The teachers were scared as well. Or they, they, they weren't strict enough on the kids. It, they might warn them, and then they'd just go and do it again a week later. So you start adding up all of these incidents, all these different situations, and they, and they start adding up. And you don't realise when you're young you're collecting this information. Even though a year's passed, you're still hurt, you're still damaged by a kid laughing at your trainers or somebody hitting you or somebody making fun of, and you know you know what kids are like when you're younger, like well, my school, any excuse to make fun of you. So they make fun of the way you, way you spoke. Uh, I wore glasses when I was younger, so, and I had a side part in, I still got a side part in now. <laughs> I really like it, but when I was younger, I looked, I don't think I did, but I guess I looked a bit geeky at a certain point and I'd get bullied for that. So you'd get judged on your appearance really critically. Like you, everybody kind of went through it. I mean, the only kids that, I mean, I say they didn't go through it. Maybe like the most, the bully, you know, like the main bully of the school, the most popular kid or one of them, he might have not got bullied. But at some point, obviously he did get bullied. He might have been getting bullied by his, by his parents 
or by or his brother or someone. That's why he was going on to bully others. Bullies usually bully because they get bullied. So everybody suffers in this. So, you know, you go through all these things and then there's situations at school where, you know, there was times where I liked a girl. I really liked her. And you, and you, you invest your heart in everything. Like you can't, you think if this girl doesn't like me back, then I'm done, I'm finished. When you're young, you, you don't see you don't see like a positive perspective like an adult would. You don't have that, that understanding. You just think that if you fancy a girl and she doesn't fancy you back, every single girl is going to feel the same about you. So if you're rejected by one girl, you're rejected by every girl. And that's the thought process that was in my head. And all, you know, all the other kids had that as well. So there's situations where I like to girl um, and then she didn't like me or other guys would make fun of me and say, oh, you know, you, you wouldn't go out of, um, you know, you wouldn't go out of Johnny. He's, he's ugly. He's, he's a geek. He's, they would say that. So that was extremely painful to handle in a class where, you know, people find out that you like a girl and then they out you in front of everyone, in front of the whole class. And then you feel embarrassed. And then the girl, um, yeah, the girl doesn't, um, she doesn't like you. She might like the guy who, who's bullying you. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot to take on board when you're a kid. And uh, I, was, I was very sensitive. I think most kids are, most people are. Most of you are probably gonna rate to everything I'm saying in this video. You've been through your own version of this. So what happens is at some point, you go through these horrible experiences and you get to a point where you don't wanna go through them anymore. So you protect yourself. Like constantly you're protecting yourself to the point where it gets exhausting. So you're not really trusting with people. You don't want to go on school trips. You don't really want to do anything outside of your comfort zone. You're constantly on edge. You're always anticipating someone attacking you, bullying you verbally, physically. That, this, is, this was what, how I lived. This was my mindset throughout most of my, my schooling. So you're always at paranoid. Even when, if someone's nice to you, you, you're, you doubt it. You're paranoid that they've got an ulterior motive. Um, you know, when you, I remember walking around in scores, always sort of, couldn't really walk freely, like just walk and enjoy the walk. I'd be thinking in my head, oh, do I look funny when I walk? Are people laughing at me and my body language? So you're living in that. So anyway, moving forward, obviously, when you leave school and you go out into the adult world, you, you, you don't know you're traumatized, maybe to a certain point, but now you've become a person who, who, who cowers away from most things, right? I know it's not a nice word to use, but it is in the dictionary. You become a coward because, not because you're a bad person, nothing to do with that, you, you're a good person, you're innocent, but because you've been abused so much by people, you develop the anxiety, you develop an anxiety disorder, basically. You have paranoia, you have fear, of, of these things happen. But the biggest fear is that they're going to repeat themselves. So you do everything in your power to prevent these situations happening again. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's, you know, human logic. That's how you survive. But the problem with this is you blow it out of proportion because what I realized later on is logically, logic is going to say, my logical mind would say, never ask a woman out again because the last time you did that, it, it went wrong and you got rejected and it was an awful, it was so painful. So never ever do that again. So you never ask girls out ever again. Another one is never ever do public speaking again or ne never do anything like sports in a big group of people because the last time you did that, you were laughed at, you, you, you were heckled at and you failed and you're, and you're a failure. So you start living your life scared and you, and you don't grow, you don't improve, you don't heal, you don't fix yourself because logic tells you never, never come out of your comfort zone. But the big danger of that is at, when you continue living like this, your anxiety starts getting worse. It doesn't just stay where it is, however bad it is, the social and the life anxiety. You get two in one. You're scared socially to interact with other people in case you in case there's some abuse or bullying or you make a mistake, you get awkward, you're so afraid of that repeating, you stop kind of socializing as much. Maybe, for me, obviously, I am lucky growing up. I know there's a lot less fortunate people than me because I always did have close friends. I, I did, I was liked. 
although I was not liked as well and I was bullied a lot, I was targeted because I was kind of vulnerable and sensitive and bullies could see that in my body language, that weakness and they would prey on that. But I did have good family so I am really grateful for that but it didn't take away the fact that I was still traumatised, still hurt and developed um, all these anxiety problems, social anxiety, life anxiety, phobias, fears, all, all kinds of um, fears. So, you know, the natural logic is to never do things that could harm you. But actually, where the healing, well, where the healing took place for me, where you get your self-respect back, where you actually get that love and light back for yourself is by confronting all these situations. But the difference is, right, this is what blew my mind. When you're 13, when I was 13 years of age, or I was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, when I went into these situations, whether it was asking a girl out or being bullied or having to do a presentation at school, when I failed in all these areas, I failed as a 13-year-old young kid, naive, sensitive boy that was 13 or 12. So I was so young then. But going into these situations again as an adult, as, a, as an older, as a grown man, as a man of 20 years of age, 21, 22, 23, 25, it's different because now you go in, you still go in very fearful, but you're stronger. You, you naturally get a bit stronger as you get older in life. So the thought process is wrong. The thought process is logically you shouldn't go into these situations because you failed at them when you were younger and it's going to happen again. But what I found is, not in all cases, but most, it doesn't happen again. Because you're a stronger person, you're a bit older, you're wiser. Obviously, the kids that, most kids that bully you when you're younger, they grow up and they change. And it doesn't happen in all cases, but generally, bullies do realise that bullying people isn't a good thing to do and it ruins their life. So a lot of bullies change and become really nice, which is a great thing. There is hope, thank God. So it's different. It's very, very different. Um, and what happens is the more you keep facing your fears as an adult, the better you become at performing in those situations. That's what happened to me. I could never imagine where I was, guys, with talking to women, just relating to them, going on a date, just having a normal conversation with a girl. I could never have imagined me getting to where I've got to in the later years where I could be confident and, and get along with a girl, woman, and ask her out, go on a date and get a successful relationship. Could never imagine that because I was in such a insecure place where I couldn't be myself. I couldn't relax around girls and women all the way up until my mid to late 20s because of the negative things that happened to me at age 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18. And it kind of died down. I mean, for me, uh, the bullying stopped when I started to stand up for myself, but it took quite a long time. Basically, by the time I stood up to bullies and stopped it happening, the damage was already done. I was already traumatised. Obviously, thank God, I, I, um, I kind of put a stop to it because, you know, my dad started to, um, you know, he started to help me to discipline myself. He started to teach me how to do press ups, sit ups, teach me how to box. I learned self defence. In, in quite in my early teens and I learned to sort of verbally stand up to bullying where before I'd shut down if someone was shouting at me or manipulating me or being nasty I, I couldn't respond but I started getting stronger and, and then I started to understand the psychology of bullies that when you stand up to them with full commitment and full force they get scared they fall apart it's quite it's quite an amazing thing to experience and see if, if you've never seen it probably you have because a bully seems like an unbeatable obstacle that can just destroy you verbally and physically but when you stand up to them and I don't just mean physically um, in, in situations I had to do that when I was younger that was self-defense because I was getting hit I had to hit back and it stopped but most of it is, commu is communicating with eye contact looking at them with calmness as calm as I am now by just saying I'm not frightened of you do what you're going to do come and do it then do it now not after school or later on or threatening me or you're going to get your friends. Do it right now. I'm not afraid of you. Like, I'm willing to... I know this sounds extreme, but these are things I said when I was younger because, you know, you're being ter terrorised. I'm willing to die. You better kill me because I ain't going anywhere and you're not going to put your hands on me and you're not going to speak to me like that. Just that confidence, that just that commanding presence, just that heart and courage 
to stand up to it. And in 99.9% .9 of the time, bullies will go, oh, what do you mean? Oh, I'm going to get someone else. They, or, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it, man. Let's be friends. In most cases, it's weird because I remember speaking to my dad about this. We spoke later on. A lot of people that bullied me, when I stood up to them, they were so nice to me after. It, it's kind of, it's almost comedic, like, how they transform, how they change and become such a nice person. And you feel like saying, why didn't you just be nice from the start? We could have been friends from the start. But then you realize they're insecure. They've been abused. They've been bullied in their household or, or, or around the area or someone else has bullied them. And they're just continuing what happened to them until they, they, they wisen up. So in your adult life, like I said, you've got to go into these situations again. And I, initially, it sounds daunting, but now I absolutely love it. It's been a process, guys, that I've been doing before any of you even knew me, before there was any Johnny Berber brand, any YouTube channel teaching, way before I come on the scene, before any of you got to know me. We got to know each other, sorry. I started this process. Uh, I just had to do it. You know, I was fortunate in a way. I have a dad that was, uh, was uh, strict, but, but fair in many other ways and helped me. And, you know, that's why I took up boxing. That's why I learned some martial arts through watching Bruce Lee. That's why it was a long process, but eventually I got there in the end. And, you know, that's why I, I do what I do. That's the reason. That's the passion. That's the, that's the real drive. That's why I've got so much passion and drive to inspire other men and, and, and women as anyone because of, because of bullying. So I can honestly say now, although I didn't like being bullied when I was younger and it, and it did hurt, it, it, did, uh, it did a lot of damage to me. If it, if, I didn't, if it didn't happen, I would never have had all the good things later on in my life. I never would have been, become a successful entrepreneur, done public speaking. I would never have got a girlfriend actually, or it would have been a lot harder. And I would have never went on to make, make money and, and meet people from all around the world and, and be on this, amazing, whatever you want to call it, journey, path of life. Would, that, I would have never have done it. I would have probably just stayed mediocre. And there's nothing wrong with that. So for me, all of the bullying, although it was hurtful and it, was, it, it affected me for, for a long time, probably for like 15 years of suffering, I transcended it and healed myself and got past it and went on to do things that I would never have done. So it's, it's one of those catch 22s. I'd, I'd never, like, if I had kids, I'd never want my son or my daughter to go through what I went through or anyone. But at the same time, I can't really say that I wish that these things didn't happen to me because I wouldn't be who I am now, I wouldn't be where I am and I wouldn't have experienced and I wouldn't have made so many great friends, including yourself. It would never have happened because telling my story was, was I didn't do it consciously, but it was a way of um, introducing myself uh, to, to more people, inspiring them, and, and people could introduce themselves to me because if I've opened up and been vulnerable and honest about horrible things I've gone through, other people feel more confident to do the same. So if you've been going through this a long time and you're struggling to deal with it, you've got to move forward, you've got to take action. And what you start realising is, that person that we identify with when we're younger, that we don't like, that person that we, we, have, we have a horrible relationship with that person, we feel ashamed, we feel disgusted, embarrassed. You, you basically uh, delete that person and you, and you become more authentic. That's probably the right word. But you can only do that through taking a lot of action and it takes a hell of a lot of courage in my experience, you can't do it by reading books. I mean, reading a book might give you some, might give you some hope to read a story and how someone's come back from abuse, bullying, trauma. But if you don't go out and actually face your demons and face these different situations that, that you were uh, hurt in, then you're not going to get past it. So just to explain it. So you get hurt you know, by a girl when you're younger. She dumps you. Happened to me breaks your heart, absolutely rips you to pieces. If you, never are, if you never ask a woman out again for the rest of your life, then you're never gonna experience love. You're never gonna be with someone that, where chances are it will work out. So you've gotta go back in, it's weird, isn't it? It's like to heal, you've gotta regroup, you've gotta get your mind right, you've gotta take a deep breath and you've gotta go, right, that situation frightens me because when I was younger, I went into that and I failed and I was traumatized by it and it brings up pain for me. 
but then you've got to go, right, I'm going into this situation. This, we're going to have a second shot at this. My mentality is a warrior's mentality, an honest mentality. I want, I, want to, I want to conquer this. I don't want this conquering me. So basically, when you're traumatised and you're younger, you've been conquered by fear. The fear that other people have put in you, the, your own fears. And to win your confidence back and your, your integrity, self-respect, your happiness and to like yourself, you've got to go and face it and you've got to keep doing it. And the more you do it, the more confident you get. And the more you can make sense of what's happened to you, why it happened to you, why it affected you, and you can change it. So I would even go as far to say, let's say someone who had more of a, a better upbringing, they didn't go through the bullying that I've been through or you've been through. And initially, they're probably not going to have the social anxiety that I've had and you've had. And they're going to be more confident. They're going to have a better self-esteem. But if you put the work in, if you do what I've done, or, or my clients, or many other people that you see on, on the internet, if you work hard, you will outgrow them. I know it's not a competition. I do believe you shouldn't compare yourself to anyone else but yourself. But let me just, it's an, it's, it's an example that will make sense to you. You will actually go beyond average. So, at the, so you're, you, you know, you're at a starting point where they're ahead of you because they don't have all the issues that you've got and I, and I had. And they don't have all these anxiety problems and all this shyness and insecurity. But where you keep facing things, they, they're not motivated to face terrifying things. They won't do it. They haven't got a reason to do it because life's kind of um, comfortable for them. But they don't grow to, to the highest of heights. So I, only, I got to much higher heights than a lot of people that I grew up with because they didn't go through the horrible bullying that I did. So in the end, who wins? You win, I win, because you don't let bullies um, defeat you. And as time goes on, it takes time, you do learn to, um, you do learn to forgive, even if you're not even trying to, it just kind of naturally happens, you do. Because what happened to me, most of the people that bullied me when I was younger, I end up meeting them when I'm a lot older, and then, they're, then they were different. And I knew that I could, if I wanted to, I knew I could, I could beat them physically because I'm a lot stronger now. All the training, all the bo boxers and amateur, and, and, and most of them haven't. They've let themselves get out of shape. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't lower my level to their level and I wouldn't bully them then because it, it wouldn't make it right. But I wouldn't let them bully me again. And usually the conversation was really warm. It's almost strange. It's a weird thing. And it's, you know, without being cheesy or, or cringy, it's quite a beautiful thing that you end up reuniting with someone who's hurt you when you're younger, they've realized what they've done is wrong. It's hurt them as well, but you forgive them and they realize that you're a stronger person and they could never do that to you again. They just wouldn't be able to do it. They're not, you're not weak anymore, you're stronger. But you're also having, you're having a lot of human decency, empathy, where you're not gonna take advantage of the fact that they're vulnerable now. The dynamics changed and obviously, doing this video makes you realize that bullying is a weak thing to do eventually it, it has a certain momentum where people get away of it but eventually they get defeated and it happens in history again and again so it, you know it's a lot of work you've got to go through a lot of work. what time is this wow almost half an hour but yeah that's how you do it you become fearless you start taking action and it's quite amazing how when you compare the two people, they're so different. Like the old you that got bullied, that couldn't really do anything successfully and couldn't perform and speak and, and get a girlfriend or start a business or meet new people or, or go, go cinema or go on the train or travel. The new person does all these things, totally different. So obviously you don't change everything about you. There are some intrinsic things that never change and, and, and that's good. Like the, you're, you're kind of like your core personality I think everybody's core personality is good if they're themselves, obviously, and they're not being fake or they're not um, acting out of a, uh, like a traumatized, wounded, dark side of, side of their ego. So there's hope for everyone. And that's why we, I'm going to end it like this. That's why we love Rocky. That's why we love Batman. That's why we love The Lion King, Star Wars, Harry Potter, because all these stories are really the same story, a story of... Um, the underdog coming back from being bullied or traumatized and being afraid and then becoming brave. 
So yeah, just to round the video off guys, or whoever's listening, girls, the way that you overcome bullying and social anxiety and trauma is by taking massive action in your life, is by systematically or gradually putting yourself in any situation that makes you frightened, whatever that is, it could be the littlest thing to the smallest. And that's exposure therapy, and the more you do that, the more you heal the past pains by, you know, by growing and building confidence now uh, and obviously into the future. So that's how you do it. Anyone can, anyone can come back from it. I did it so you can. So I'll speak to you soon. I hope that gives you a lot of hope and inspiration. Let me know in the box below as well if you want to share your story. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.